Will you take this? And I'm sick of it. How much longer is this going to go on? I don't know how to do anything else. Then you'd better learn. And you'd better make some money somehow. I will. I will. When? That's what I want to know. When? You'll see. I'll find a way. Maybe today. <sighs> oh. Oh. Good day, Mr. Kirby. Oh, hello, Bob. My wife here? Yes, over there with your little blonde. Oh. Hello, darling. Oh, Bill. Sorry I'm late. I got held up. Oh, not my business for you, dear. I didn't take a job suddenly, if that's what you mean. I'm much too old for that sort of thing. Now, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I waited for somebody who didn't come. Hello, Edna. Where'd you two meet up this afternoon? Oh, I called her and invited her. You don't mind, do you, dear? After all, we've known each other for years now. In fact, I'll become a friend of the family if I'm not careful. Hey, you've gotten her to talk. But that's wonderful. She sat absorbed in that paper ever since she got here. You want to know what's happening in the world? <laughs> Ask it. What is happening in the world, Edna? Well, here's a man robbed a woman. Got 22 francs. Happens every day. Yes, but he murdered her, too. That's a poor return on his investment. Well, when they let him go, send him around to me. If they get rid of my aunt the same way, I'll give him a million francs. Oh, Bill. Don't say your aunt said no again. Yes, and very firmly. Has he told you about Mrs. Henderson? Mm hmm I took the liberty, sir. Oh, thank you. And a martini sec for you. Thanks. Everything all right otherwise? What's Mrs. Henderson going to do with all her money? Well, she's going to give it to me. Then why worry? Because she lived to be a hundred and that's too long. I'll get rid of her for you. For a million francs? Just for love. Did you cut yourself, madam? No, no. Bill, why don't you tell her now, this minute? Yes, tell me, darling. Don't you think this is a rather odd place to discuss a personal matter? You don't have to shout it out. Just say it soft and distinctly. Helen, Edna and I... Edna and you think you love each other, is that it? Yes, I'm afraid that's it. And, um... Uh, you'd like me to step out of the picture? Not at all, darling. You stay where you are, we'll step out. Ah, thoughtful. I didn't want it to happen this way. You put anything you like, Bill, as long as you pay. Meaning what? Meaning she'll let you go if you give her money. I mean that and a good deal more, my pet. We live entirely on credit, Bill and I. Well, you must have guessed it by now. You must have guessed how the credit and everything else revolves around that aunt of his dying. And if she takes too long, well, you'll get tired of waiting at an end. Poor Bill. Well, I'll get along now. Guess you too got quite a bit to think about. Oh, yes, and in the meantime, Edna, you better just go along being a friend of the family, huh? Goodbye. Bye. You know, Helen took it nicely, didn't she? Nicely? What's so nice about demanding a fortune you haven't got? I'll get it somehow. I love you, Bill, I really do. But Helen was right about one thing. If you don't do something soon, I can't wait. You understand that, don't you? I understand only one thing. I can't lose you and I won't lose you. Did you drop this, sir? I don't think so. I guess I did. You want another drink? No, thanks. Mind if I go? No, if you must, you must. Playing against yourself? I just want to see if I can throw two aces. And if you do? The answer will be yes. Yes to what? Nothing important, just an idea. Goodbye, darling. Bye.
you. Look at my hands. Yeah, idiot. Hey, we robbery. Chance to get your woman some money. And look what you've done. I didn't do it. You think the police will believe that? You'll wind up on the killer. Dad. All right. I'll make a bargain with you. You keep your mouth shut about my being here, and I'll get you out of this mess. How? Let them catch you, and then just sit tight. I'll get you out of prison. I'll have a hiding place waiting. I'll never let that knife fall. But I don't know you. How can I trust you? What else can you do? I'm your only hope. Come on, I'll take you home. I told you I fell down. Fall out of one night. Where did you fall down? In a street. What street? I don't know. Oh, you don't know anything. I'll put it away. You can find your own way upstairs. Your name is Joseph Hattin. I arrest you for the murder of Juliet Henderson and Elsie Cardo. I didn't do it. You come along with me. Now? Yes, right now. What do I say to her? You come along. You gotta help me. I can't see. Yes, I know. I found your glasses. Now where are you going? I'm going with this man. With him? Why? I found his glasses. Found my glasses. 
You be careful. Take him to headquarters. How did you find your way back from St. Clue without a pair of these? I didn't kill anybody. Who gave you Mrs. Henderson's address? I didn't kill anybody. Why won't you speak out? I've told you everything. You told me that you broke into the house to rob Mrs. Henderson. When you got there, you found her lying in a pool of blood. And that somebody stepped on your glasses. I didn't see who it was. How did you find your way back from St. Clou without your glasses? You know what will happen to you, don't you? God? Who is your accomplice? I am God. Who? I'm sorry if my nagging got you into this trouble. I didn't have anything to do with it. Didn't it make you try to steal? Well, maybe, but that's all I did. You didn't kill her, did you? No. Then who did kill her? I didn't see who it was. But I know there must have been someone with you, someone that helped you home. Who was it? I can't tell. <laughs> if you won't tell, then it was you that did it. You alone. through your fingers. I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Camellio. And remember, I take no responsibility for this. You realize your career is at stake. And a man's head. Oh, 
Javier are following him. Right. Nice. Is the canteen open yet? Well, they don't you send me up some breakfast. get a room near his. I'll phone the great with the dog you. Try to leave a note anywhere? Positive. We never took our eyes off it. Didn't he seem to be looking for someone? If he was, he didn't find him. What about the... What? Yay! What's the matter? Listen to this letter printed in the safe A semi-official announcement was made in this morning's papers to the effect that Joseph Ertan, awaiting trial for murder with the same assizes, has escaped from prison under inexplicable circumstances. We are in a position to state that Joseph Hurtan did not escape. He was made to escape. We are not in a position to give the details of the odious comedy that was played last night. But we are able to state that it was the police themselves who presided over this pseudo-escape. How could anyone know about that? It's not in here. Not in here. Nothing here. Lucas, run down to the offices of the sea flare. I want the original of this letter. Right.
This is what I was afraid would happen. This is what I thought would happen. This is what has happened. How's Jean Pierre? He's all right. I heard you want him fast. Think he'd die? My wife sent him. He could have been killed. I'm sorry it had to happen. I'm sorry the whole thing happened. Every paper in Paris is screaming for investigation. I've had 30 phone calls since I came in. Think I haven't got superiors too? What are they getting? Phone calls. If I don't lay my hands on the murderer, in 10 days I'll hand in my resignation. I'm afraid I'd have to accept course. In other words, if you don't lay hands on Joseph Ertan, lay hands on the murderer. All right. Let's leave it at that. If there hadn't been a leak somewhere, I'd say, take your time. But this situation is driving me out of my mind. Well, when you found something, let me know. That may be sooner than you think. You got a lead? I've got this piece of paper. Where'd you get it? From the editor of the Cifre. Look at that. It's too bad it's been handled by so many people. There's no sense in looking for fingerprints. No. What does it tell you? Not a thing. What about you? Well, I've studied it half the night. The paper comes from the Domago, saint germain de Do you know the place? Yeah, I know the place. The writing was done with the left hand, not by a left-handed person, but by somebody who knows it all. Left-handed writing looks pretty much like uh, intellectual. What was that? Intellectual. The kind that uh, speaks and writes seven different languages, you know? Of course, if I'm going to give you a portrait of him, it's uh, not uh, strictly scientific. You go on. Well, unless I'm mistaken, we're dealing with an extraordinary individual. It's strange. I find here a curious mixture of uh, willpower eh? and uh, weakness, of uh, coldness and uh, emotional capacity. Uh, uh, man's writing. Oh, yes, but uh, I find traits here that are definitely feminine. Of course, I know this wouldn't be very convincing to an examining magistrate, but uh, just to say, I could have told you much more had he written with his right hand. Now, there are stains on that paper, though, of course, they might have come from the linotype. Right? But that spot there, that is copy. In other words, this letter was written yesterday morning in the bar of the Dermago by a polyglot customer who was probably drinking coffee. Who probably has just committed a very bad act. That's right. It's not exactly the sort I expect. Oh, you think it's her as a compass? Tell me, uh, what do you do when a girl writes you a love letter? Oh, I uh, never would read it. It would tell me far too much about her. And besides, I never have received one anyway. I'll be losing my man as soon as the will's probated. I weep for you, the walrus says. I deeply sympathize. <laughs> the sighs and tears she stretched out both her eyes. What's the matter, Bill? Inspector? Mm -hmm. Do you drop in here often? I, I smoke a pipe. I have a drink. I got one. I, uh, I don't think I've noticed you here before. By the way, are, um, are all those rumors true? What rumors? Oh, you know that the uh, murderer... Oh, there's nothing to worry about. It's a very pretty girl with your wife. Yes, she's very pretty. It's not French, is she? No, no, uh, American. Her name's Edna Warren. Charming. Yes, well, uh, you'll excuse me, Inspector. Let's go. 
and yogurt, 55 francs. Excuse me, bring me some caviar sandwiches. Caviar sandwich, one. Three. Three caviar sandwiches, three. And some vodka, too? Yes, some vodka, too. And some American cigarettes. Sir, your check. That'll be 300 for the caviar sandwiches, 40 francs vodka, 200 cigarettes, and what you have before. I'll pay you tomorrow. You'll have to speak to the manager about it. Hey, Bob. The fellow wants to come back tomorrow and pay his check. He's had uh, caviar sandwiches, vodka, cigarettes. That's right. You have no money? Just enough for the yogurt and coffee. You live in a neighborhood if you send somebody with you? I have no money at home. Yet you order caviar. Hey, George, get a policeman. You sure you have no money? I think that's what I said. Hurry up, hurry up! This the one? Yes, he orders caviar, vodka, and expensive cigarettes, and refuses to pay. I have no money. All right, come along. Done. 
didn't carry out and couldn't pay. Only that? The circumstances were odd. Where'd you do it? Tell my go. Send in Vare. What about this her time business? You're mixed up in it, aren't you? <laughs> the papers ought to let us do our own way. I'm with you there. You know what you're charged with? What have you got to say? Nothing at all. Where do you live? Have you any means of support? You know you're liable to get 15 days for that. The sentence would be suspended. You'd have to say it was a first offense. And then you're Hunter age 38, born in Brunn, father unknown, has lived in Berlin, Mainz, Bonn, and Hamburg, medical student. Is that right? Professor Grohle, whom you may have heard of, will tell you I was his best pupil. Mother Elizabeth Radek died two years ago, employed as domestic servant. How do you live? I knew you were a policeman. How do you live? While she was alive, my mother used to send me enough money to study medicine. Out of her wages as a servant? I was her only son. She'd have done anything for me. Does that surprise you? It was two years ago. Since then? Some relatives send me money from time to time. And once in a while, I get some translating to do. What about um, the editor of the Sifle? I'm afraid I don't understand. It's enough. Take him out. Keep him here tonight. Let him go in the morgue. Jean Vier. I don't like the look of them, but uh, what's this about the Sifle? I don't know yet. <laughs> That inspector about Radek. What? Oh, yes, delighted inspector. What can I do for you this beautiful, beautiful morning? Very simple matter, Professor Grawley. I want some information about an ex-student of yours called Johan Radek. Uncanny, inspector. That's what was wrong with that young man. Uncanny. Radek. <laughs> Mind you, very intelligent. Too intelligent, in point of fact. Was he a good student? He had a remarkable flair, inspector, for sensing the weakness of others. His fellow students were afraid of him. Come to think of it, so was I. <laughs> Do you know he'd look at you for a moment or two and know everything that was wrong with you? We'd meet a man, any man, a woman if you like. And he'd say to them with delight, he'd say, you'll be dead within a year. And believe it or not, within a year they'd be gone. A sinister gift, Inspector. I could have made a great doctor of him, but he was unbalanced, you know what I mean? One moment burning with excitement, the next deflated. Beg your pardon? Well, out. Yes, like a match. A sick man, Inspector, what we call manic depressive. Oh, manic. This gift to diagnosis wasn't only medical, it was moral, too. Not only here, Inspector, but here as well. Oh, I wouldn't want a gift like that. Oh, dear me, no. Thank you very much, Professor. Huh? Oh.
he told me to come here. Oh, my son. Follow me. straight here, as I told you. They were following me. Why did you show yourself around the cafe? I didn't think. I'm sick of helping you. It's better you'd be dead. And I'll do anything you say. Then stay here until I come to get you. And don't show yourself. If the police get you, they'll tie your hands behind your back and cut your head off. You want that? No. You can help a man just so long. After that, he's on his own. No. Remember, stay here. Seven yogurts. Does that make you feel hungry? No, just the other way around. Oh, Inspector! Isn't it time we had a talk? I've been thinking a great deal about you. I'm all ears. I'm sure you are. But not here. Why not here? I'm taking my patronage somewhere else. This morning when I came in, they expected me to pay in advance. Did you? Yes, but things like that leave a bad taste in one's mouth. Do you know the restaurant on the Eiffel Tower? 
No. I go to the tower every day alone. Now, perhaps the two of us can go. Shall we have lunch together? Caviar sandwiches and vodka? Agreeable? a feeling of power, like watching an anthill. Don't you ever wonder how it feels to fall from so high up? A man of courage could find out. What a brilliant gesture of contempt for human weakness. If life ever becomes completely humiliating, I recommend a leap from the top as an excellent means of leaving this best of all possible worlds. But not until after we've had lunch. Your health, Inspector. Don't think for a moment I'm throwing doubt on your professional capacity. If in this case you understand less than nothing, it's only because right from the start you've been working on falsified data. And having gotten on the wrong track, everything was inevitably wrong. And everything you'll find out will be wrong, right to the very end. You can't make out what I'm up to, can you? It looks as though I were trying to put my head under the guillotine. Here I am, talking about the very subject in which you're dying to get me involved. But how can I be brought into it? I've nothing to do with any of these people. The most that could be said against me is that yesterday, Joseph Hattin was wandering around outside the Demego and seemed to be looking for me. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But the fact remains that I left the place accompanied by a couple of policemen. And what does that prove? You know, you made a mistake letting her tag go before you got a conviction. You may never get anybody else to take his place, and there's always the possibility he'll get completely away. Then you'd be stuck, wouldn't you? Shall I help you, Inspector? Shall I give you the pretext you need in order to arrest me? There, 100,000 francs, brand new notes, easily traced. Have a good time! Trace them! Or would you prefer to arrest me? Or perhaps best of all, wouldn't you like to start all over again? Say at the Henderson house. That's what I'd do if I were you and I just heard what you've heard. I think I'd go out there this afternoon and go over those false tracks again. Who knows what I might find? Listen, son. I will start all over again. I might find out how long ago. You came into the picture. Hello? Hello, Mr. Kirby, this is 
is your friend. What do you want? I've just heard the police are reopening their investigation into your aunt's death. Yes, yeah, starting tomorrow. They're going over the house again with a fine-tooth comb. And this time, they'll find the knife. I left it there somewhere. Where? Where? Who is it? No, I can't remember where, but it has my fingerprints on it. And when they find it, it'll lead them directly to me. And from me to you, you'll have to get it. Me? I can't. Yes, go out there this afternoon, now. It's the last chance you'll have. It's your neck, Mr. Kirby. Who was that? It was Helen, wasn't it? Bill. What did she say? What is she trying to do now? Nothing, it wasn't her. Bill, whatever she said, whatever you're going to do, don't do it. I can handle her. Bill! K four two three seven one one eight one K four two three seven one one eight one. postcard? I own it. Uh, K four two three seven one one eight one. Seven one one eight one.
feel any better? No. That's all in the night's work. I don't remember anything after. Did I say anything I shouldn't? Probably. Time is it? It's 8 o'clock. Time to go to work. Work? I want you to stay sober today. I want you to visit Radek's mother. Don't confuse me. Radek's mother is dead. That's been investigated. It isn't true. She's alive and somewhere in Paris. I want you to find her. What do you want me to say to her when I do? Listen to what she has to say. All right. What are you going to do? Well, I must call my wife. When I stay out all night, she develops a certain curiosity. What are you going to do after that? I got a couple of things to do. Hello! into Radek's mother's place. I found her ten. He was strung up from the rafters. Uh-huh. You better come over as soon as you can. All right. Thank you. Now, uh, what are you saying about uh, the two women? Life is complicated, isn't it, Inspector? You had the misfortune for once in your life to get an idea in your head and try to see it through. A sudden flash of genius. But genius is like anything else, Inspector. You have to start young. And to think that your career is at stake, a spotless record, you might have been promoted. How do you explain the suicide of that rich young man? Really, Inspector, if I were in your place, I'd try to create a diversion. I'd arrest someone of no importance. Someone like Radek, whose mother was a servant at Boone. But then that wouldn't do any good, would it? You'd still have her past fingerprints and her past footprints. And then there's Kirby, who shot himself when you reopened the investigation. You have to go through those two to get to me. And you haven't got either of them. So you can't touch me. You listen and you never hear anything. That's your trouble. I'll be following you.
It's a pleasure to see you, Inspector. I was afraid you'd given up, and there's so much to interest you. The two women, for instance. You mustn't lose sight of me, of course, but do you think they're safe, Inspector?
aren't you going to see what she does? I've told you a hundred times, you'll never understand anything. I'll tell you again, you... You may be making a mistake, Inspector. Just imagine. Suppose they find another corpse in there in the morning. She's carrying. Look here, Radix, shall we go and take a look? If we put our heads together, we should be able to understand everything. Don't you think so, or would you rather not? Or are you afraid of finding a corpse in there? You said something about a corpse just now. Now, that's a pack of nonsense. Whose could it be? Mrs. Henderson's dead and buried. Her maid's dead and buried. Uh, William Kirby's dead and buried. Mrs. Kirby just left the taxi, so she's alive enough. Shows of her time. Nobody knows where Joseph Ata is, but he's a possibility. Ah, Edna Warren, she went in the house, and she hasn't come out I'll yet. come with you. Ah, good. And now, we can walk right in and make ourselves at home. Sleeping women, no concierge, no dogs. Nothing at all to worry about. Come on. But you know, Rod, if you were quite right about the corpse, that would be a nasty surprise. You heard of Mr. Comelio, the examining magistrate, a man who can make himself very nasty when he wants to. And I'm in the doghouse already by having that Kirby kill himself. You see, I was more or less there at the time. In fact, he's fed up with the whole business. Another corpse, indeed, there would be a hullabaloo. And I should be properly in the soup for having that Mrs. Kirby walk off like that without even finding out what she was carrying. As for you, how could you be implicated? You haven't been out of my sight the whole evening. In fact, for the last week, we spent a great deal of time together, haven't we? By the way, there's one thing I'd like to know. Am I following you, or are you following me? Come in, Roddy, come in. You aren't squeamish, are you? You don't suppose it makes any difference? I don't suppose it makes any difference to you that a couple of women were knifed to death in the place. Oh, by the way, we never found that knife. Hertha was supposed to have thrown it in the river as he went away, but you know, I'm not so sure. In fact, I've come to the conclusion that it might, after all, have been hidden here. What was Mrs. Kirby carrying just now? You see what I'm getting at? Something about a foot long, wouldn't that be just about the size of a good dagger? Oh, you're quite right, Rennick, you're quite right. This case is getting more and more complicated all the time. Hello, what's this? Footprints? We'd better follow these. We might even find out what Mrs. Kirby came for. Who could find that clock? Five o'clock already. It must be getting daylight. So it is. The steps seem to be leading to that closet. Wait a minute. What about that corpse of yours? Supposing it's there? We'd better be careful. Never mind, we've got to face back sooner or later. You'd better open it. Go on, open it. was with me. He planned the burglary? Yeah. He said he'd help me make some money for Gisela. And he... Well, you swear to that in court? Yeah. You murdered them. He wanted me to die for what you'd done. I'll kill you. Hey! He's no good to us dead. 
You've got to bring him into court safe and sound. I don't want to lose my job. And I want to save your neck. Lucas, you may take this young lady home. Thank you for your cooperation, Miss Warren. You know who this man is. He wrote me and told me to come here. Was he the one? Yes. He wrote to both you and Mrs. Kirby, telling you first to go to the Bellevue. And both of you to come here. He thought you might harm each other. He forgot one simple thing. The police might intercept his mail. Uh, Mr. Camillo. Can we go now? Oh, yes, thank you, Miss Warren. You played your part well. Oh, Camillo, may great. I've got her time. No. We can prove his innocence. Well, I've got the murderer, too. His name's Raddick, R-E-D-E-K. He's a Czech. We're bringing him in. No, we can prove everything in court. What? He's got a way I'll pull the back of